Hello everyone, my name is Federico Pulselli. I'm from the University of Siena and uh, I'm going to illustrate to you the uh, U-STEP teaching module. So the set of uh, lessons, uh, exercises, uh, games uh, and uh, interaction, interactive activities we are going to give students uh, in order to uh, teach them sustainability. Yes, because the uh, the, the main aim of uh, this uh, intellectual output of the uh, USTEP project is uh, uh, to teach sustainability to using university students, trying to involve also the, uh, the teachers and also uh, the administrative staff, and also hopefully the governmental people of the university uh, in order to make right decision in the, in the future. So uh, you can understand that we are dealing with sustainability. Um, we uh, are going to, um, to, to present this, uh, to implement this uh, module, uh, uh, which is primarily intended for undergraduate students for all courses and degree types and postgraduate students with no specific environmental science background. At the same time, the STEP teaching module adopts the ecological footprint as a tool to express values and give important messages on uh, our life on this planet. That is the only one we had. Uh, so two important uh, points to be highlighted are the fact that we are aiming at uh, a transdisciplinary approach and uh, uh, we are trying to uh, communicate the fact that we are living in uh, one planet. Uh, these are two important characteristics of sustainability, transdisciplinarity and just one planet. And we can summarize uh, our approach with this phrase, we should operate within the biophysical limits of the planet, but beyond the boundaries of disciplines. These are the main characteristics of the uh, uh, teaching module that I'm going to illustrate uh, to you. Uh, the structure is made of uh, frontal lessons, interactive discussions, games, digital facilities, videos, class exercises, uh, homework and tests uh, by which we, uh, we, we will try to have feedback from, uh, from students and teachers and uh, um, have material for research purposes. Uh, we have made uh, some experiments uh, last year and we understood that the teaching proposal is good for face-to-face -face lesson, for online lesson. Uh, we were forced to do that uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, emergency and long distance learning because one of the, our partner, the uh, Università di Aberta is a long distance uh, university. Uh, the uh, process of the USTEP modules module uh, um, uh, is in three phases. The first one in uh, 2020 was made by the four uh, universities promoter of the, of the project uh, uh, made of design, implementation and feedbacks from students and ourselves uh, and the first refinery. The, the second phase is a dissemination through this kind of uh, uh, meetings like, like this one. Uh, with our wider com communities and we are um, looking forward uh, for having your uh, feed feedbacks as well to uh, arrive to the final version that will be spread everywhere for every uh, university in the, in the future. How to access to your step model? The uh, material is available as said before by George and Sarah in English, Greek, Italian, and Portuguese. And uh, everything can be downloaded from our website after registering. Uh, and uh, slides, uh, uh, articles, presentations, videos, and so on and so forth can be, uh, is available for everyone that can implement, that would like to implement this uh, module. Um, Obviously, there is a free access without any, any cost, but uh, all, the only one it, that is needed is the, your registration in our website. It is a very easy operation. This is the summary, the very uh, summary of, uh, of our uh, module, uh, which is made of uh, uh, six to 10 or 12 uh, academic hours that can be articulated in, very, in, in seven steps that I'm going to illustrate to you um, uh, in one minute. Uh, these are the seven steps, but we can uh, go ahead 
um, in uh, to to all the session. The first session is a, a an approach that try to tries to Im involve uh, students by means of a, a CMAP, trying to uh, act, that can be also collective uh, that is made uh, by all the students together. Uh, the, the object of the CMAP is the connection between uh, daily activities of the students with environment, economy, society, and institution that can be uh, interpreted however you want. And the result is a, a kind of scheme uh, with which students can visualize the connection. Uh, connection are, are, are the very important aspect of sustainability. These are examples of uh, CMAP. Uh, uh, and as you can see, uh, they are able to visualize connection uh, among elements. The second session um, is a, a game proposal. Uh, the game is called Fisher for One Day, and uh, it's very easy to explain it to in just one minute. I will try to uh, uh, let you to 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 show you something about that. Imagine you have a an accountant, an observer, and in front of you, you have five uh, students who are uh, a fisher. Uh, you can also divide the class in, in groups of five people and ask them to fish how much fish, uh, as much fish as possible in 10 days. This is the only rule you have to, uh, to tell them. And they can fish one, two, or three fishes. This is the scheme you have in front of you and you can start to take into account the choices of the fisher, of the five fishermen. So the first fish two, the second one, the third one, the fourth three, the five two, and the total take is nine. Then you go to the second day, and the second day is like this, and you will see very, very, uh, strange faces in your uh, uh, by your students, uh, strange expressions, but no problem with that. Go ahead with the third day. The third day is like the like this. You can take into account all the uh, all the fish that is uh, taken. Then the, the 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 fourth day. Then going ahead, going ahead until the fifth day. Oh no, the fifth day. Uh, is, uh, is not possible because the game is over. Why the game is over? And this is the question you, ca a question you can ask students. Why the fish, why the, the game is over? Because the fish is over. Uh, there, not, there is no more fish in the lake. Why? This is, this is the second question you, you can ask. Why? Because there are some problems. For example, some informational pro problems. No one, say, no one uh, knows how many fishes are in the lake at the beginning. And for example, <clears throat> the regeneration rate of the fishes. So you can go ahead with the explanation and uh, uh, I can uh, uh, show to you what uh, happened actually. You have 25 fishes at the beginning minus the nine, you have 16. And here uh, it is important to know the regeneration rate. The regeneration rate with these numbers, with this information is one fish reborn per five fish remained in the lake at the end of the day. So 16 brings about three new fishes. So the next day you have 19 minus six, that is the result of uh, uh, the fish day, you have 13, that makes two new fishes, you have 15, minus 11, you have four, no new fish can be regenerated, because the population is too small, uh, with four uh, fishes in the lake, seven is not possible, so the, the, the game is over. Now you can give the information to students, 25 fishes at the beginning and one fish per five remained in the lake at the end of every day. So find a solution to arrive to the, 10, to the day number 10. They will arrive for sure uh, to a different solution, but the most uh, uh, 
the, the most the, the best solution is this one they will be able talking to each other to find this kind of solution one fish per fisherman with one without fishes remember that the fisherman must eat and must sell uh, the fish uh, to survive so they will distribute the zero among them and they will arrive with 25 fishes at the end of, of the uh, 10 days and probably uh, they will uh, be able to distribute almost equally uh, the uh, revenues of the uh, of the activity of their activity um, almost equally so uh, this kind of game that is very easy uh, will uh, inspire uh, a, a lot of uh, um, aspects uh, linked to sustainability. For example, knowledge, the information is important, without which uh, we will finish the fishes. Cooperation is important. It's very ancient art uh, that uh, uh, is expressed by uh, the, the ability to talk with each other, the ability of students, of fishermen to talk with each other. Equity is also important and sustainability because they will face the fact that the, 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 the resources are, uh, are limited. Let's go on and this can introduce the uh, um, uh, one important aspect of uh, uh, our everyday life that is the overshoot and in particular the overshoot day. The overshoot day is the day in which nature uh, we exhaust the, the, the resources that nature produces every day, renewable nature that uh, produces every day. Uh, the, this indicator is important, especially if seen in time series. We have a, a terrific, uh, tremendous result. Uh, the, the overshoot day arrives uh, always uh, before every every year, we you can uh, find on the internet a lot of representation of the overshoot day. This is very important to represent the finite the finiteness of resources and the fact that we live in just one planet, and we must respect this physical biophysical condition. Session three: sustainability and SDGs. Okay, we must mention the SDGs, and we can uh, make class exercises uh, asking students to connect uh, schools or universities, uh, both as institution and the institute they attend actually, with every one of the, uh, of the 17 sustainable development goals, which is very important to stimulate rational and uh, uh, different aspects. You know that we have 17 goals in the agenda 2030, uh, divided into 169 uh, detailed targets. They are, have been negotiated by the United Nations, so it's a very important um, initiative, probably the most important in the sustainability field all around the world. And uh, uh, we have these since 2015 and will rest with us, will remain with us uh, until 2030. We have a lot uh, of things to do uh, by 2030. Uh, United Nations identified three words, in, three important words to describe the, uh, the uh, Agenda 2030 and the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, the first is universality. Everyone is involved and uh, no one must be left behind. This goal applies to every nation and every sector, cities, businesses, schools, organizations, all, all are challenged to act. The second word is integration. It is recognized that all the goals are interconnected in a system. We cannot aim to achieve just one goal because achieving one goal can um, uh, jeopardize uh, the, the, the achieving of another one. So they must uh, consider all uh, together. We must achieve them all. The third uh, important word is transformation. It is widely recognized that achieving this work, these goals involves making very big fundamental changes in how we live on Earth. Uh, we must see, we, we must say also because, uh, but however, the, the Sustainable Development Goal Initiative presents also a lot of opportunities for our development and for our future, not only sacrifice, also opportunities. Session four, the ecological footprint is uh, the core of the OSTEP 
pro project. It is an important environmental accounting um, method. Uh, and it is important for us because uh, on one hand, it is an assessment uh, method uh, with technical aspects and a rigorous uh, um, method for accounting uh, consumption of resources. On the other end, it is a very powerful communication tool so it is important uh, because it can carry uh, important messages uh, about the finiteness of resources and uh, also uh, indicating uh, what to do. So the opportunities I was talking about before. Uh, you, can, um, you can take a handle uh, the, uh, the aspects of ecological footprint however you want. You can go in deep in the methodology or you can simply introduce the fact that we can measure consumption, translate it, uh, our consumption, our, the, the thing we, we need every day, uh, translating them into a land category and calculating a, uh, a footprint. What is a footprint? An, an area surface. And uh, all our consumption can be translated into uh, um, uh, the area that is necessary to provide uh, uh, the goods and the services uh, we need every day. We have the ecological footprint on one hand, on one side, that is our demand of goods and services from nature. And on the other side, we have the buy capacity. Uh, that is what nature is able to actually provide to us. So the comparison within the two uh, can uh, help us understand if we are within the limits or beyond the limits of our planet. This is an important message. Uh, we can go from consumption in the calculation of the ecological footprint to the total ecological footprint, and we can go from the area we have uh, is, is uh, available for us to the total biocapacity uh, following the same scheme, the same conversion factor, the same uh, uh, ecological, ecology, ecology based uh, accounting method. Uh, uh, you can go in depth uh, with this methodology with the, the material you can download from our website and we can have a look to our situation, our own situation at home, our personal situation, but the situation all around the, the world, the differences between uh, the, the countries of, of the world. Uh, the next session is uh, the calculation of uh, your personal ecological footprint. I'm not illustrating it to you because it will be the, uh, the, the, the argument, the, um, uh, the core of the next presentation this morning. Uh, it is uh, just to say it is a very, very effective exercise that can involve uh, interact uh, with the students in the uh, transmission of the ecological footprint message and sustainability message as well. The session six is, uh, six is devoted to uh, the sustainability within uh, your and our own university. So uh, students will be uh, uh, invited to find some example of uh, um, sustainable and unsustainable aspects uh, within the university and suggest something to improve performances and uh, uh, involve other people and communicate uh, values, aspects, and uh, uh, stimuli to everyone. So what is sustainability in university? Some aspect of university sustainability, factor indicators related to university sustainability, scales and indicator uses used to assess university sustainability, and some example. As you can see, this is deeply connected. This uh, session is deeply connected with the second main aim of the U-STEP a project that is the uh, building of the um, uh, university uh, footprint calculator, uh, which we are working on uh, in these weeks. Uh, the session seven close, closes the concludes uh, the, the module, uh, and uh, it can be summarized with another C map made by the entire class, uh, which is hopefully more aware of the things we are talking about uh, because th they uh, attended all the, all the modules. So 
uh, restart the sim up in your blackboard and see if something changed after uh, the module. Uh, the module uh, includes some class exercises, uh, Fisher for one day, the connection of SDGs and university, footprint calculator that will be explained in, uh, in brief, uh, two concept map at the beginning and the, at the end of the module, and some homework that you can uh, ask uh, students to do. Uh, sustainability future at your university, personal ecological footprint in your day, daily life, uh, sustainability around the world, finding example, uh, finding uh, stimuli, finding solution, finding uh, aspects that can be connected with the things uh, we are giving them during the module. Um, we are uh, refining the guidelines for teachers in order to uh, extend the information I'm, I try to illustrate to you in these 10 minutes. And I thank you for your uh, attention.